Step 4. Lasers 2. So we said in the previous step that in order to create population inversion, we require a three-level atom. So this is our new atom. It's got three levels, and we renamed the ground state to E1. The previous excited state was uh, EE, but now we're going to call it E2. And then there's another level of higher energy, which we are going to call E3. And how we do and this new introduced level is uh, an unstable level, meaning that whenever we excite the atom uh, to energy E3, then it quickly uh, decays. It doesn't spend much time in this uh, highest uh, uh, level. And this transition between E3 and E1 uh, will be referred to as the pumping transition. And this transition e between E2 and E1 is our original lasing transition. So the goal is to uh, uh, create population inversion by exciting the atom to E2, but without uh, actually affecting the lasing transition, meaning somehow we need to uh, excite the atom to E2 without causing stimulated absorption between E1 and E2. So let's see how to do that. Consider a photon coming in that's tuned to the pumping transition's uh, energy. So its energy is equal to the difference between E3 and E1. What that does, it causes stimulated absorption of the ground state atom, it absorbs the energy of the photon, and it gets excited to uh, energy level E3. And at the same time, it does not affect um, the lasing transition at all, so uh, it, the atom does not get excited from E1 to E2, purely because the photon, the blue photon that caused the stimulated absorption, is tuned to the transition between E3 and E1. And as we said, the level E3 is uh, unstable, so it quickly uh, decays to level E2. And then, once it's there, it can interact with an incoming photon that's of the uh, correct frequency given by the lasing transition. And as we saw, what can happen is stimulated emission, and we obtain two photons of the same frequency, traveling in the same direction, and uh, that are both in phase, meaning that they are coherent. So this is the cycle. We are irradiating the photon uh, by two uh, light sources. One light source, this black one, is tuned to the lasing transition, and it's uh, responsible for causing the stimulated emission. And that's uh, uh, that's basically our laser, laser light. And there is also this pumping photon coming in that's responsible for exciting the atom to E3, which then quickly decays to E2. So the pumping photon is responsible for creating a population inversion. And that's what we said. And what we end up with is, if we have many such three-level atoms, we end up in the situation where N2, so the number of atoms in the level uh, E2, is larger than the number of atoms in the level E1. And uh, if uh, the um, pumping rate is high enough, uh, then all of the atoms that are in the ground state, they are more likely to get pumped into E2, rather than absorbing the incoming uh, black photons uh, and getting uh, um, excited to level E2. So, now let's start to build our laser. All of these dots, they represent our three-level uh, three atoms, and we're going to refer this, uh, to this as a gain medium. And the gain medium can be either solid, it can be a gas, or it can be a liquid. So, without doing anything, most of the atoms are found in the uh, ground state. Occasionally, some of them get excited, and what happens is they decay via spontaneous emission, and they are giving out light in all directions. But we want to obtain lasing action. We want all of the light to be coherent. So what we do, as we saw, we must create population inversion. And to do that, we start pumping the medium, represented by these blue arrows. So what that does, it excites our atoms first to level E3, then it quickly decays to level E2. And we, in fact, do get some uh, stimulated emission, but still we are getting also some uh, spontaneous emission. But more import most importantly, 
the photons that we get via stimulated emission, they are escaping our gain medium. What we can do to prevent this is actually build mirrors from both sides. This will increase the uh, number of photons inside the gain medium that will later be part of this cascading process of creating more and more uh, coherent photons. So now we are pumping our gain medium. We've got 100% reflective mirrors on both sides. And what happens? In fact, we see lasing action inside the medium. Uh, we are, the pumping uh, creates population inversion, and then the existing uh, photons that are inside the gain medium stimulate emission on the lasing transition, creating more copies of those photons, and again, cascading into a lasing, uh, lasing uh, action. So we created a laser. The only problem is the light is confined within the gain medium, and somehow we need to uh, get it out. So what we do, we take one of these uh, mirrors, and we make it partially reflective. And partially here means that it's 99% reflective. So what happens? The photons inside the gain medium, they've got some probability to actually escape out. And they in fact do, and what we get is a nice monochromatic, in-phase, traveling uh, in the same direction light. And this is basic, the basic principle of constructing a laser. And as we said, the output is coherent. So we said that we have to pump our three level uh, atoms in the gain medium uh, at some level. We have to pump it hard enough. So can we get some physical understanding where the threshold is? And for that, we will write down a very simple, a little bit naive model of how a laser works. Let's say that the number of photons in the gain medium is given, given by small n, and that's a function of time. The number of excited atoms that we care about because they contribute towards the stimulated emission process is denoted by capital N, and that's also a function of time. And the rate of change of photons inside the gain medium is given by the difference between some gain process and some loss process. So let's examine, what's the gain? Well, the gain depends both on the number of photons that are already in the, uh, in the gain medium and on the number of excited atoms. If we don't have any photons, then we cannot cause any stimulated emission. If we don't have any excited atoms, again, we don't get any stimulated emission. So we can model the gain term as follows. We've got some g, some proportionality constant, which we are just going to call the gain coefficient, times uh, the number of photons, times the number of excited atoms. Okay, how about the loss? Well, as you saw, we lose photons uh, by uh, the, these photons escaping through the partially um, reflective mirror. So we can just model it simply as some coefficient k, which we're going to refer as the loss coefficient, times the number of photons uh, that are already in the gain medium. If we don't have any photons, we have nothing to lose. If we have more photons, we are more likely to lose them. So, this is our model, that the rate of change of the photons inside the gain medium is given by these two terms, gain minus loss. And now comes the crucial bit. This capital N, the number of excited atoms, also depends on time. Mainly, the stimulated emission that happens decreases the number of excited atoms. And let's say that our uh, uh, pump has the ability to keep the number of excited atoms at some constant level N0 if there is no lasing action. So if there is no stimulated emission happening, this is the number of excited, uh, uh, excited atoms that we have due to the pumping process. So we can write down an equation uh, for the number of excited atoms simply as N0 minus alpha where this alpha is, some, is the rate of stimulated emission. So substituting uh, everything back into the uh, uh, rate equation for the number of photons, we get the following dynamical, nonlinear dynamical process. We've got this linear term, n, which depends, depends on some combination of these parameters. And then we've got a nonlinear term, n squared, which depends on alpha times g. And as you can see, uh, all of our uh, 
uh, uh, parameters are positive, therefore the graph of this uh, uh, n dot is always um, a concave parabola. So let's consider one case and plot this graph. On this vertical axis, we've got the rate of change. And on the horizontal axis, we've got the number of photons inside the gain median. So, if n dot is positive, it means we are increasing the number of photons in the gain medium, and uh, this happens when we have lasing. However, if n dot is negative, it means that the number of photons is decreasing. There is no lasing, we are simply losing photons. And you can see that if n0 is such that it is less than k over g, this first linear term in our n dot equation is negative. And then what happens is our n, n dot uh, looks, looks like that. And the little arrow on the horizontal axis means that it doesn't matter with how many photons you start in your gain medium, you will eventually lose all of them. Meaning the fixed point of this process is at n equals to zero. So no matter with how many photons you start, at the end of the day, you will always lose your photons. And that's because the um, coefficient in front of the linear term is negative. But of course, we can increase in zero. We can just increase the pumping strength such that the coefficient of the linear term is positive. And that's the following scenario. And you see that now we've got two fixed points. One uh, is still at n equals to zero. But this time, this uh, fixed point is unstable, meaning if we have zero photons in the gain medium to start with, of course, we will not see any lasing action and we'll we will remain at n equals zero. However, if we just slightly perturb uh, from this situation, if we increase the photon number just a slightly, n dot in that region is positive. It means that we are getting more photons. So we will move along the n axis until we reach this black circle, which is our new stable fixed point. On the other hand, if we start uh, on the right of this fixed point, we start with more photons, we will lose some of them, but we will stop at this finite fixed point. Meaning that in this regime, when n0 is larger than the ratio of k and g, we get lasing action. And we can see that uh, if we plot the number of photons as a function of the pumping strength, uh, which in our model corresponds to capital N0. And in the region where N0 is less than k over g, our fixed point uh, in terms of n is just zero. Always we lose all of the photons from our gain medium. But once we increase the pumping strength past this threshold given by k over g, we see that the fixed point for n keeps increasing and is finite. So, in the region where n0 is less than k over g, we basically have a light bulb. The only source of light that comes from our gain medium is uh, incoherent light. On the other hand, if the pumping is strong enough and n0 is larger than k over g, we have a laser.